microbiologist known as Dr. Germ said, there's more fecal bacteria in your kitchen sink than there is in a toilet after you flush it. That's why your dog drinks out of the toilet. He's smarter than you think. And if that hasn't grossed you out yet, wait until I tell you what happens when you flush with the lid up. Here are 10 disgusting bacteria spots in your home right now. So we'll kick it off with the dirtiest item found in the home. Your kitchen sponge is a breeding ground for bacteria. A study found that sponges can harbor up to 45 billion bacteria per square centimetre, which is more than the inside of a toilet. Even if you clean your sponge daily, it's still not enough to kill all the bacteria. The best solution is to ditch the conventional kitchen sponge altogether and use a low waste alternative which dries out quicker, meaning less chance for bacterial growth. Next up, where do you keep your toothbrush? If it's in a toothbrush holder, then you better be cleaning that thing daily. A study found that toothbrush holders can harbor more coliforms than the handles on your bathroom taps. That means there are more germs in the container that is holding your toothbrush, which goes in your mouth than the handles on the taps in your bathroom. Toothpaste gunk, saliva, and even blood from your toothbrush can drip down into your toothbrush holder twice a day. Your coffee maker might be your first pit stop in the morning before you go to work, but it's also home to bacteria. The study found that there were 35 to 67 different types of bacteria breeding in the drip trays of Nespresso machines. The bacteria thrive in the warm, damp environment of the coffee maker, and though no, the high temperatures of the brewing process doesn't kill them. Kitchen countertops near the sink area are also pretty disgusting, as you're often wiped down with sponges and cleaning cloths that have E. coli and other bacteria. They can be contaminated with bacteria from cutting raw meat on them or placing items like shopping bags and backpacks on them. It's important to use a disinfectant kitchen cleaner and finish off by drying the countertop with the disposable paper towel. Next up, look at this knob. If you don't keep the knobs on your stove clean, then that might be harming your health. In a study conducted by the Public Health and Safety Organization, they found that 27% of stove knobs contained mold and yeast, and 14% contained coliform bacteria. Next time you're cooking your dinner, do yourself a favor and give them a dunk in hot water full of antibacterial soap. What are you watching this video on right now? Because if it's your phone, you might want to go give it a clean. Smartphones are festering cesspits of bacteria. A study found that they can carry up to 4,200 units of coliforms, a bacteria indicating fecal contamination. Just take a look at this image of the bacteria found from different parts of an iPhone. The next time you're winding down after a hard day and decide to run yourself a bath, it might be worth checking that it's clean enough to do so. The grout between your tiles and the ceiling around your bath are perfect places for mold to lurk, and the drain itself could contain 119,468 bacteria per square inch. That's more bacteria than you'd find on a toilet seat. A microbiologist had also noted, about 10% of bacteria you find in bathtubs come from fecal matter, and it can get dried into the bathtub ring. Are you disgusted yet? Does it make you want to shut this video off and go and watch some well-earned TV? Well, you better clean that remote too. A study found that they have 290 colony forming units per 2 centimetres, compared to only 12.4 colony forming units on the toilet seat. Viruses can also linger on remotes for two days or longer. If someone in your home is sick, they could easily spread the germs to you through the remote. So, after being compared to a lot of other household spots, it's surprising that the toilet is considerably safer from bacteria from items such as the kitchen sponge. But something that will gross you out even further, one of Dr. Germ's disgusting studies was on how far bacteria spread when you flush with the lid up. Well, it's at least six feet. So if you've got your toothbrush somewhere within that range, then sorry to say, it's getting sprayed with fecal matter. And lastly, we get to the well-known universal rule, which is the five second rule. You're either the person who picks up that bit of food you've been craving that you've just accidentally dropped on the kitchen floor gives it a quick check to make sure there's no floor bugs on it and then down the hatch, or you're the better safe than sorry type who chucks it in the bin and leaves it for the dog. Well, you probably won't be that surprised that it's the latter that gets the win here. In fact, even a one second reel wouldn't even save you from whatever bacteria is lurking on that dirty floor. Bacteria that can cause food poisoning, such as salmonella, E. coli, and listeria. The moisture content of the food can also affect how much bacteria is transferred. For example, Food that's wet or sticky is more likely to become contaminated than food that's dry. So next time you drop your food on the floor, don't take the five second rule for granted. It's probably best just to throw it away. 
and thanks for watching guys as usual if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you're not subscribed already please press that subscribe button it'd make my day and until next time